sun and the shadows better watch my back what's that why it's a little black cat feeling rather lucky don't cross my Hi, welcome to Alley Cat Music Studios, or a little musical workshop here where a lot of the magic happens. I'm really excited about a few upgrades to our studio here. Um, one of those upgrades has actually been Sibelius 7, uh, notation software program, of course. Now, uh, the last version of Sibelius that I was using was actually Sibelius 3. I know, pretty archaic by uh, Sibelius 7 standards with all the new stuff and the new capabilities. Back in the Sibelius 3 days, uh, you actually couldn't uh, get a different library of sounds playing through Sibelius. So you couldn't use VSTs like um, the one I have here, Marislav Philharmonic, which is uh, what I want to you know, get working within Sibelius 7. Um, so Philharmonic is uh, it's an older VST. But a lot of people uh, really, uh, you know, it has a great library of sounds. A lot of people still use it. You can still get a lot of mileage out of it. So if you're not ready to throw in the towel with uh, Philharmonic and you've got Sibelius 7, or even if you're just looking for, uh, for some information on how to use VSTs and, and get different sound libraries into Sibelius 7, then this video is for you. So stick around. Okay, so this is the piece that I was uh, really excited about uh, working on yesterday. It's pretty much done. I just needed to get, uh, you know, hear it uh, being played by decent sounds like the uh, Miroslav Philharmonic sounds instead of, you know, straight ahead MIDI or what have you. So uh, I came in and uh, I'd installed Philharmonic. I thought it was all set up. Uh, yet when I went to go press play like I am now, nothing happened. Um, you know, as, as you can hear, there's, there's no sound coming through. Um, now this uh, will happen, um, even though I've already set up over here. I've even actually set up Miroslav Philharmonic, if you can see there on the top uh, part of your screen. Okay, so my Philharmonic is actually set up there, um, but uh, it's not playing. Now, the reason it's not playing, I think I mentioned this earlier already, is that Sibelius is a 64-bit program, and Philharmonic is uh, only a 32-bit program. So even though I already set things up, it's not working. Um, but uh, anyhow, I'll just take this uh, moment to uh, point out that uh, that can, um, under the play tab so right here if you can uh, hopefully see my mouth at the mouse at the uh, top of your screen not my mouth uh, you don't want to be seeing that too close but uh, the mouse clicker pointer thing okay so um you need to be under the play tab like i am here and then uh, after that you need to uh, set your sounds up uh, either here with uh, configuration excuse the camera work um and also, under configuration, there's a little tr uh, box here that opens up uh, options for playback devices. So this is where you're going to need to go, um, you know, to, to set all this up. You'll notice that uh, Philharmonic actually does not show up here because it's the, uh, once again, the 64-bit version. And this was the problem that I'm having. So even though I've already made a configuration for Philharmonic, it's not showing up here as a VST instrument. Um, okay, so now I'm going to take you through the steps of uh, actually doing that. And uh, as I mentioned before, um, you're going to need to actually uh, get Sibelius uh, running in 32-bit mode. Now, thankfully, Sibelius 7, when it installs, does install both, uh, both the 64-bit uh, and the 32-bit uh, mode. Uh, Miles Davis is enjoying some fine trumpet playing there, as you can see, while we get this going. So how do you find Sibelius, the 32-bit um, the mode? Well, let me just get our camera a little bit lower here. There we go. Okay, so uh, here I am on my um, programs, right? And if you do a search right here for Sibelius... Just uh, typing SIB in mine actually brings up uh, two links to Sibelius 7 and Sibelius 7 32-bit. Let me try to zoom in here. So that's what you're going to see. You're going to see Sibelius and Sibelius 7, uh, sorry, Sibelius 7 and Sibelius 7 32-bit. Click on 32-bit. And now you're opening up Sibelius in 32-bit mode.
Locating the Philharmonic DLL file is uh, the next step and it's a pretty straightforward task. You just want to go to my computer. Uh, mine's on my main hard drive here, so that's where I'm going. Program files 86. Once again, I'm looking for the IK multimedia folder right here. And Miroslav Philharmonic. And there it is, the Philharmonic DLL file. That's uh, DLL files are the the uh, VST instrument format. So, uh, if you had another external uh, software synth um, that you were using, uh, that you know, again, it would be a DLL file, uh, and that's the file right here that you have to uh, take and put into the correct folder. Um, I've actually made copies of mine, which is why this one's still right here. So I, I left this one here, uh, copied it, and pasted it into the new location. Okay, so you now know how to open up Sibelius in 32-bit mode, but that's still not enough to get Philharmonic working. Uh, so what are the next steps we need to take? Well, um, in order to, to get Philharmonic working, uh, you need to get a DLL file. So I'll show you where to find that. I'm just going to go to my computer and local disk C. Now, uh, over here we have program files. This is actually pretty important. Okay, so you see here that we have program files. Just got a better camera angle on this. And program files 86. Um, so the 64-bit version of uh, Sibelius installs in program files and the 32-bit version of Sibelius installs in program files 86 or x86. So you need to be dealing with the 86 program files um, because you will find Sibelius in both. But remember, you need to go to program files 86. Okay, now uh, once you've done that, uh, you can find your AVID folder like I'm doing here and this is how uh, I found out online that you were supposed to do this. Once you're under the AVID folder you have uh, a couple different folders here among them VST plugins and um, according to uh, some of the stuff that I read online that's where you're supposed to put your Philharmonic DLL file. Now that actually didn't work for me. I tried this, it didn't work. Um, I, I copied a DLL file here and just kind of left it there. Uh, but like I said, that did not work for me. So um, again, I'm pretty sure that's how you're supposed to do it. But for some reason, it still wasn't happening. So uh, there's another folder that I have in my program files and it's right here, VST plugins. Uh, and I ended up putting another copy of the Philharmonic DLL right here. Now, this is actually uh, where it worked. Now, um, my one of my cats, Daisy, is actually, I don't know, she's, she likes being on camera and she's picking over here. I think she wants to help with this tutorial too. Hi Daisy. Did you want to say something about Philharmonic or Sibelius? No? Just came for some moral support, huh? Okay. Alright, so, um, as I was saying, uh, this VST plugins folder uh, is actually where I put all of my VST plugins and um, when I use Cubase uh, this is the folder that Cubase is going to look for VST instruments as well and as my sort of VST library grows this is where they'll be going so everything's going to be connecting to this once I put my DLL file here uh, I was able to uh, tell Sibelius to look here for Miroslav Philharmonic and that's our next step. So you want to uh, cut or copy and paste a Philharmonic DLL file into your program files uh, either AVID or a VST uh, plugin folder or really whichever folder uh, you know you, you use for that for VSTs and uh, then we're going to go back in and uh, open Sibelius, oops, Sibelius again. Now this actually is not going to work right now because I just accidentally opened up the 64-bit uh, version of Sibelius uh, over here. So I need to back out. And once again, you already know how to uh, look for the 32-bit version of uh, Sibelius. You just want to be uh, doing a search uh, like I'm doing right here. And here we go. Here's the Sibelius 32-bit. Logging in now with the 
considerably long-winded, long-winded intro. Turn that down a little bit. All right, so as you probably already know, when you uh, load up Sibelius there, you have a couple of tabs, and if you've been working on a couple of uh, projects, those are going to come up, at least in your, your recent scores tab. So I'm going to bring back up Minor Waltz, and here we are again. So everything is set up. I am now using the 32-bit version of Sibelius. I've installed the DLL file for Miroslav Philharmonic exactly where I should have installed it. I'm going to go over here to my Play tab like I did before. You can see the Play tab up there. And rewind everything to the beginning. Press Play in the glorious moment where nothing happens. This was pretty frustrating yesterday after I got to this point. I really thought it was going to be working, and it hasn't. Uh, remember that um, before you can just go ahead and play, you still need to configure your Philharmonic sound. So, uh, meaning that you have to click over here where it says configuration. Um, right now, because I've already taken this step, uh, Philharmonic does show up, as you can see. Uh, along with the other general MIDI and so on. Uh, but yours won't show up uh, because you haven't done this yet. So, uh, you click the um, playback devices screen that we had before and uh, now we're back we're back to this menu. So, thankfully Philharmonic does show up as a VST as you can see there uh, near the top of your screen. Um, you will need to uh, Activate this though, and also make a uh, a new configuration. So, uh, in order to make a new configuration, you're going to click the new button. If you hadn't guessed that already, choose name. So I can choose a name where you know we can call this Miroslav Philharmonic 2. I'm actually not going to go through with this, but this is what you would do. You know, just name it what you like, Philharmonic or Miroslav Philharmonic. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you know, you, you choose the device to to activate and and so on, and then you just like I have here, Philharmonic from the left column, click activate and it puts it in the right column. Um, so I just did that there. Uh, there's a copy of that. Of course, I don't need this, so I'm going to deactivate it. But uh, this is the step. This is how uh, you would do that. Okay, the work's not over though. Once you finish doing this, you have to go back down to uh, audio engine options. So we're going to click that. And uh, this is actually where you tell Sibelius which folder to check um, for VSTs, uh, among other things. So if you'll see here where I'm zoomed, we have virtual instruments and effects folders, and then you have a button that says folders dot dot dot. So this is where you click. Now, mine already comes up with uh, the two paths that I was talking about. There's the AVID VST plugins, and then there's uh, just the straight ahead VST plugins. Of course, both of them going through Program Files 86 because we're in 32 bit mode. Um, so, uh, you will only have, uh, you will only likely have uh, one of these. Um, which would be the AVID VST plugins, you will need to create the other folder, so that's where you would click Add, right? And once I click Add, I can, you know, go into my, um, go into my computer, basically, and, and, you know, go backwards or what have you, and just sort of look for other folders, or look for the folder that, uh, that has my VST instruments, uh, or my VST DLL files. Um, so I'm not going to do that, but it should be pretty straightforward. I've set myself up already, so there's no need. Um, once you do that, you have to click over here on the rescan button. Um, so the rescan button, uh, once you click that, uh, this allows um, Sibelius to check for uh, other folders the next time Sibelius starts. Of course, I just re read that off the screen there, uh, as you can do as well. And we're going to take um, another look over here. Once you uh, have done that, the next thing to do is just to click the close button, which is right there. And another message comes up saying, please restart Sibelius for this effect to take change. Now, I don't need to restart Sibelius because I've already done all these steps. Once again, just wanted to show you what you're going to be looking at here. So at this point, you can um, just close Sibelius and restart it.
And the next time that you log into Sibelius, you should be set up for sounds. And that's exactly what I thought. So once again, I went and uh, checked everything out, press play, and the glorious moment once again where nothing happened. This was where it was really frustrating because I knew I had done everything correct, I had taken all the right steps, everything was in order, and yet I still wasn't getting any sounds. Um, so this is the one thing that I, I didn't see addressed online at all, and uh, but it's actually quite simple, so I'm going to show you how to take care of that little problem right now. And basically that has to do with your mixer. So we're going to, uh, your mixer button is right up there with the uh, other configuration button. Right there, as you can see on the screen. So we click mixer. Okay, now if my score is playing, which it is right now, uh, you can see through the mixer that uh, you know there's a signal coming through. So of course it's all working. Um, and there's a button right here that uh, shows or hides your virtual instruments. So you can see Miroslav Philharmonic popping in and out. Now there's a few key pieces of information and a few key buttons uh, right in this section. Okay, at the top here, you can see that uh, I can see which MIDI channel each instrument is going through. So, for example, piano A and B are going through uh, channel 1, violin 1 is going through channel 2, etc. Okay, so you're going to have to match these channels to Miroslav Philharmonic. And uh, this little gear button right here shows the interface for Miroslav Philharmonic and it pops up right here on your screen. So you know that Sibelius and Philharmonic have been set up. So here's our Philharmonic interface now. And you can see that Philharmonic is actually connected. I don't know if, if uh, you can see the keys uh, moving on the screen there, but Philharmonic is also doing its job. The problem is that I hadn't chosen the actual sounds that I needed to choose. So I'm going to actually add these uh, live off the floor here, just for you. Uh, channel 2 was violin, so I'm just going to choose my uh, violin uh, sounds over here. I just want a solo violin because this is a chamber piece. And there you go. That's uh, happening already. My second violin is going through channel 5. I'm going to use the same sound for that so uh, we can hear those now. Uh, let's see. Channel 3 was going to be my viola. And, uh, well, I'm going to continue here, but basically you know that from this point on, uh, it works. And uh, you just need to choose your sound sets. Um, I had done this already, but it seems like uh, you might have to do this every time uh, you, you, load up, um, you load up Sibelius. It didn't save my settings. Uh, but it's possible, if, if you know Philharmonic maybe a little better than I do, then it's possible that there's a... Um, there's a way to get uh, get this programmed into Philharmonic as a sort of standard standard setting. So let's just find our piano here, and uh, we can we can finish um, getting the correct sounds. And there we go. Just happened to be in part of a song where the piano's not playing, but if I take us back to the beginning. Here we go, the moment you've all been waiting for. Okay, so uh, that's about it for uh, Miroslav Philharmonic and setting up Sibelius 7. I hope this was uh, useful to some of you. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments below. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. and. Uh, hit the subscribe button.